For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Mm. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. All right. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, but if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, I want to share something with you. When I was reading this, what came to my mind, and I thank God for it, is, okay, you see this lighter, right? Now, always keep lighters in your house in case you have a blackout. You can light candles and still have some light. But here's the point. This doesn't have much fluid in it, but listen to this. There's a mechanism here with a plus and a minus. If I push it over to the minus, that, let's say, is the flesh. We are mingling our salvation with the flesh. We're mingling our flesh with the spirit. So we try to get a spark, and we get a little flame once in a while. You see that? But now, now we're walking in the spirit. The power of God is working through our lives. Look how brightly our light shines. Now, the point of that is what you are feeding off of will determine how brightly or how dimly your light shines. What you put in you, what you surround yourself with, what you consume your thought life with will determine how high, how bright, or how dimly your light will shine around others. Even your pathway will seem dimmer and dimmer when you live in the flesh. So what I want to say to you is, <clears throat> excuse me, be mindful. Be mindful of what atmosphere you are around. Be mindful of what you surround yourself with, who you surround yourself with, what you take in, who you take it in through. You can't just do any old thing you want to do or hang with any old person you want to hang with. It's not that God's being a killjoy. It's because like a surgeon, God must keep your surroundings, your atmosphere, and everything you take in as sanctified, as sanitary, as clean as possible for your good. See, when you're raised up, let me share this with you. When I was a kid, 
I was raised in a house where both my parents smoked cigarettes. Think about that. Now, I know some people who also lived across uh, the street from a cow patch, a cow, I guess that's what they call it, cow patch, where the cows grazed and pooped. Now, the whole neighborhood smelt. It reeked. It was, it, it would stop your breath. The stench was so strong with cow dung. In my house, you walk in my house with my two smoking parents and every day inadvertently, it was always a cloud hovering in the house. Why? Because both of my parents smoked. My father smoked pipes, cigars, cigarettes. My mother smoked three packs a day. Ha! So, you know that house was packed. And here we were breathing in secondhand smoke. And I always wondered, why do I always catch colds? Why? Because the contaminated atmosphere lowered my immune system and made me more vulnerable to the attacks of the viruses hovering in the air. Now, listen, I'm making a point. I hope you're getting this. When I walked in my house, I could be outside playing all day long, play handball for about seven or eight hours nonstop. Come home, jump double dutch, ride my bike, everything. Come in for dinner, I never smelt the stench. Why? Because I was used to it. Now, some of you, when you live in the flesh and you're used to it, you're used to the stupid arguments. You're used to silly attitudes. You're used to getting upset over nothing. You're used to flaring up and, and, and tick for tick, tap for tap, word for word, blow for blow. You slap me, I slap you. You cuss me, I cuss you. I mean, that's the mindset. We get used to that. And we think it's healthy, but it's very unhealthy, very counterproductive, and extremely destructive. That's why the Bible says living in the flesh leads to death. It's not just talking about the death of the body. It's talking about the death of your spirit, the death of that light, the death of your anointing. You cannot afford to be carnally minded because what you're doing is pouring cold water on the fire, the holy fire of God. All right. Now, another thing, the family I told you about that lived across from the cow patch. Check this out. I walked in their house. I'm asking them, what is that awful odor? It was all in the street. We could smell it a block away. What is that? And you know what they said to me? So sweet. What odor? You don't smell that? It was... It was so strong. I would, it was literally taking my breath away. Horrible. They lived that all their lives. So they smelt nothing. They could be gone all day in a nice, clean environment in a whole different neighborhood, come home, and they still smelt nothing. Because that was their norm. Some of you live in households where there's argue, 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 fuss, 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 attitude, oversensitivity. Well, what did you mean by that? Why did you have to say it like that? You get on my last nerve, blah, 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 blah. Well, why don't you go jump off the freeway? Why don't you go jump in the lake? Why don't you just drop dead, matter of fact? Screw you. No, screw you. And they go, I mean, what? <laughs> Hello? Sounds like a bunch of kids fighting, don't it? I mean, doesn't it? But adults do it all the time, now don't they? 
act like little alley cats. <laughs> and that's the norm. So they don't see anything wrong with it because their mama acts like that. Papa acts like that. Brother and sister acts like that. Cousins act like that. Buddies down the street act like that. Homies act like that. Everybody acts like that. Your co-workers act like that. Your, your, your boss talks trash. Your supervisor talks trash. Everybody's talking trash. So what do you do? You get tired of them looking at you like you're crazy and you want to fit in. And it's easy for you to slide back in to your old ways because that's been your norm for the majority of your life. Ooh. When I left the city I used to live in to move out here, it had been about a year and a half or two years since being there. When I went back, I was dumbfounded. I'm looking around and I'm saying, oh my goodness, what happened is so run down. And I said, what happened? And people are like, what are you talking about? It's the same as it's always been. Well, I was there as it was aging, as the shopping centers were aging, as the buildings were getting older and things were getting beat, beaten up and dirty. I was there. And that was my norm. But when I came out here and things were less than 10 years old and everything looked fresh, clean, and new, and the buildings were in great shape and no chipping pain and no, no stains on them and the windows were nice and clean and the, and the roofs were in great condition, the Spanish tile roofs over everything, everything looked so nice. And I said, wow, what a difference when you get used to the dirty environment and what a difference when you get used to a cleaner environment. Now, here's another thing that got me. After being out here so long, what I realized was my eye got used to things being in great condition. So when I went back to the old, the old looked worse. If I, who am an ex-smoker, gets around a smoker, the smoke stinks. Oh, I mean, it is disgusting, the smell. Not because I'm holier than thou, but because God has kept me free of cigarettes. So I'm not ingesting cigarette smoke all day, every day. I don't ingest it once a week. I don't ingest it once a year. But if I'm out in the public and somebody is smoking, they could be outside of the store or standing outside the restaurant. If I'm in the building, I can tell somebody around here smoking. It's like my nose. What is that? What is that? Oh, that's horrible. That's cigarette smoke. Ah, ah, ah. Why? It stinks worse to me than it does to a person who never smoked. Because I live both sides and the contrast of being without it smells so much better that anytime I'm anywhere in, in a room where the smoke lingers somewhere in the corner, I'm like, oh, oh, why don't they put that out? Well, when you live for the Lord, I hope you're getting this point. When you live for the Lord and you live a holy life and you fight tooth and nail, Every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, you are doing your darndest to live for God, even though you will fail. When you get around people who aren't even trying, the cussing that you used to do turns you off. I don't want to hear that. The attitudes and the fussing and the cussing and the fuming and the fighting. I don't want to be around that. 